I think it's time to unleash the Kraken and show all of you what is inside the case. Cracking everyone, my name is Ryan, and today I get the absolute privilege to showcase to you a collaborative event between Modhouse Audio and Enlium for a limited edition set I'd like to call the Modlium. It's not really called that, so please don't go Googling Modlium anywhere, you won't actually find it. But I thought this was too good of a set not to have a name, right? Now, before I get into this, I want to send a huge thank you out to Modhouse Audio and to Enlium because both parties sent different parts of this set into me so that I could get this ready for launch day, which is today, to talk to you guys about. Now, by the way, you can find this on Modhouse Audio, you can find this on Enlium, and you can also find this on Mimic Audio site to purchase. As usual, guys, all thoughts and opinions here are of my own. All right, I am sure you are all wanting to know the price of this set, but before I do that, I do want to remind you of a couple of things. This is the Modhouse Tungsten double-sided. If you buy this on Modhouse site or on Mimic, this will run you $2,000 on the base model. Now, the Enlium amp is the HPA 23RMH for Modhouse, also for high power. I'll get to that in a second. This amplifier you can find on Enlium site for $3,000. Actually, you can't find this amplifier because it's part of this set, but the HPA 23RM is what you can find on Enlium site. The case has been specially made to fit both of these inside of this case. You could take this with you on the go. All of this comes together for $5,500. Now, I do wanna remind everybody right now that this is a very, very limited set and Unfortunately for right now, it is to US only. So if you're outside of the US and you're interested in this, you're gonna have to wait a little bit till they get through the first initial batch of all of these that sell out. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the amplifier first. And I wanna talk about a couple of the differences you're gonna find between this and the original 23RM. Now, as I said, this is the 23RMH. Does not look any bit of different from the original, except the bottom plate here is engraved to say Modhouse and Enlium Special Edition Set. What that means, that MH stands for Modhouse, but that MH, or the H at least, also stands for high power because they have been able to intricately place more components into the current output of this amplifier to output 35% more power. Now, they only have one engineer that is actually skilled enough to place all of those components into the current output of this. And think about that, of how tight of a space they had to fit that in to get that power output. Very impressed by that. But that's another reason these are very limited since they have just one engineer that can do it. Now, the other thing I do wanna mention is just like the original Enlium, when you turn this on, when you get to about nine o'clock, you're gonna hear a click in your headphone and that is the mute relay kicking in to give it volume. And depending on the headphone and the IEM that you plug into this, you are gonna hear some clicking when you're turning the attenuator up and down. Now that is perfectly normal. However, on the tungsten, most of the time I didn't hear it. And that is because the drivability of the tungsten, you just don't pick that up as you would with a more sensitive IEM or headphone. Now, the other thing I do want to make sure to mention is the original Enlium will last about three and a half hours out of the current output for the battery that is inside of this. This one does not. It is 35% more power. More power will drain the battery faster. That's just a given. So I'm finding my use time to be somewhere between two to three hours max before I need to plug this in and charge it. What's nice about this though, because it does include the USB-C cable, you can leave this plugged in at all times if you want to do so and you don't have to worry about charging it that way. Now, a couple of quick things I do want to note on the amplifier is that this power is the Modhouse Tungsten, which is probably the hardest headphone to drive right now that we know of. That means this will have many more use cases besides just the Tungsten when you get this set. I have also been told by Sue and of Enlium that they are going to release this particular amplifier as a standalone amplifier with the H for higher power 
after they get through this initial batch. Now, I don't know when that's gonna be. It'll be down the road at some point, but I'm sure some people will like extra power out of the current output of this amplifier. Arguably, probably one of the biggest releases in 2023 for headphones, if not the biggest release in late 2023. The Modhouse Tungsten Double Sided is a fantastic but super hard to drive headphone. This particular headphone has been colored to match the Enlium HBA 23RMH. In fact, Enlium themselves did the color on the grill, they did the logo on the grill because you will notice at the bottom here, there is the Enlium logo. The chassis is also that blue color. The top is that blue color. You do get the black, nice and comfortable strap here. I gotta say, beautifully crafted headphone. It does also come with the ZMF Alter Perf pads as well as a second set of pads, which are the ZMF Caldera hybrid pads. Also the very nice Viking weave cable that I've come to love so much. This is a 6.3 terminated Viking weave cable because the 6.3 output of the Enlium is the current output. So they are matched up that way. Now, I do wanna make sure you guys know, this is what you get. There are no modifications you're gonna be able to order because this is intended to be this way to match each other on that limited edition set. Why would you wanna modify it anyway, right? And as a reminder, in case you guys needed a reminder of it, the tungsten is 155 ohms of impedance and 78 dB per millibot on average of sensitivity, AKA one of the hardest to drive headphones you're gonna find, and it's driven beautifully by the Enlium amp. Now, before I talk about the case, I wanna remind you guys that I have done a video already on the Enlium and a video already on the tungsten double-sided and single-sided. I'm gonna link those right around this point of the video so that if you guys wanna check out what I think about each of these individually, you can do so because this is not a true review video of either one of these. This is a review video of the package. I'm reviewing their package. Now this case is custom designed and made by Enlium and Sue In actually designed this case. Nice job, by the way, because the moldings on this precisely fit the Enlium, the tungsten, the alternate pads, the cable, the power brick for the Enlium, and it's all in this very snug fit. And by the way, this is a locking case as well, and you get a couple of keys. So you wanna take this with you on the go, keep it locked up. Let me set this up for you guys because I went through a little bit of a journey with the Enlium and the Tungsten and that I wanted to see different levels of performance based on the DAC that you pair up with this because that is the missing component of this set is you need a DAC. So I started off with something portable with my Cayenne RU7. Now the RU7 has a very efficient line out mode that you can use to plug into amplifiers, take with you on the go. I gotta tell you, with the RU7 line out going into the Enlium with the tungsten, I was probably about 70 to 80% volume at the most on low gain. And then I could flip that to high gain and get between 50 and 60. Now for reference, I don't listen louder typically than 80 to 85 dB and that's, that's getting kind of loud for me. So that's about where I am in my listening level. Now the RU7 can come a little hot at times into the trouble. It's also spacious, which is very nice and it lent to this headphone very well but we're talking about a $5,000 collaboration. So a $200 DAC, yeah, you may want to up that a little bit, and I did. So my next step of the journey was to use my Bifrost 264, which is currently my desktop DAC that I use. Now the Bifrost 264, I gotta admit, does collapse the stage a little bit, but it adds some slam down below. It gives a little bit more punchiness. It's a little bit on the warmer nature of things, and man, that definitely was a step up in audio. However, I just so happened to have, thanks to Kitsune Hi-Fi, by the way, the Hollow May DAC right now. Now the Hollow May DAC is a four to six thousand dollar DAC, depending on what you do with it. And that, paired with the Enlium, paired with the tungsten, brought tears to my eyes listening to music, and that's no joke. It is my own personal audio nirvana that I have finally reached at home. And I gotta tell you, I'm still sad because I know none of this is mine to keep. 
So that brings a tear to my eye as well. But that's what I'm talking about, the scalability of synergy between products. And these two alone are fantastic together, don't get me wrong, even on a simple $200 DAC. But with something like the Hollow May, no joke guys, I found nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with my audio. And I was really trying to pinpoint something that I disliked about it. I would like to leave you with a few track examples that I experienced with the Tungsten and Enlium. And the first one is a track by Sarah Bareilles. Now it is the song Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. It is a live performance. I discovered it on Tidal, it just came to me as a recommendation. When I put that track on, I happened to have this paired up with the Hollow May at the time. I stopped what I was doing. I was actually taking notes, I think, for this project in general, and I stopped and I closed my eyes because what I was hearing made me do that. The brittleness of her voice came through so crystal clear. She was booming over everything else. And there's just a piano basically playing along with this track. But the vocals of hers and just everything that came together with this, the reverberation all around me, I just felt like I was in that venue with her. And this is probably a very well recorded live performance as well. So I'll give it that. But I had that sense of being right there. And I had that sense of even sitting right next to her, even though I'm not talking about an intimate sound. It was an absolute incredible experience and one that honestly did almost bring me to tears. I definitely recommend that track with this headphone or anything else that happens to be something that you enjoy. Now for a second track, I would like to recommend Jazz Man by Beth Hart. Now, Beth Hart happens to do a lot of bluesy type music, but this track is a jazzy type music. And I was really getting into this track. Her voice has a lot of growl to it, gravel, and it can be rough and gruff at times. And I picked all of that up, you know, the flimminess of the voice and everything, not to be gross or anything like that, but just that level of detail. And I gotta say the instruments that rolled through. So at the very beginning, you get this bass that comes through and it's this low, filling bass that just fills in the track in the mix. Every instrument of that band I could hear in all their moments, and it's not in an unnatural way like some planars can be. It's in a very natural sense, but all together, and again, audio nirvana. I found nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this. I felt the space of it. I felt like I was there involved with the music and was another one I just stopped and listened to and wrote down to share with you guys. And then my last one to have a little bit of fun is If Darkness Had a Sun by Metallica. I love my rock music. I love metal music at times. And this track in particular has that punchiness to where you feel the air as the drums hitting. And you just, again, feel that air pushing off of that drum as it's given you that impact of the punchiness that I'm talking about of this headphone. And then the guitar that comes in, there is not only grip, but there's grit. And guitars like that, when you have that moment, first of all, it makes you kind of want to sit back and do the whole air guitar thing, which it made me do, but it brings you into the music, which is again, what it's all about. And this track had me rocking out like I never have before. And I experienced so many moments like this with the Enlium and the tungsten double-sided, no matter what DAC I paired it up with, quite honestly, but especially the Hollow May, I'm not gonna lie about that, to where I find no faults, none. And that's me, that's my personal preference. This hits every box, checks every box, and they knocked it out of the park with this collaboration, and it's a very limited set. So you're gonna wanna pick this up if you're interested in doing so as soon as you can, so they can get this out to you guys. By the way, in case you are wondering, I do know they're gonna push these units out a little bit quicker because of this collaboration. I can't give you an exact time frame, but possibly one to two months, somewhere around there. Don't quote me on that, but I know that's something they are definitely shooting for. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know about this collaboration in the comments down below. I would love to know your thoughts on this. Guys, also, please smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. I am really trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and I do have a Patreon as well. If you'd like to support me, you can join me there as well. Now, I thank you all for watching, and Enlium, Modhouse, I thank you both again 
for sending this out to me and giving me the chance to present this to all of you. All right, guys, I will see you in the next one.